Brain-based learning and education. Let's talk about how our brains learn. First, what do we mean by brain-based learning? Well, through neurological research, which are studies of the brain, an educational philosophy was developed based on the findings, using the brain as a tool for designing brain-friendly learning opportunities for students. Although not everyone is on board yet with this newer philosophy, claiming that many brain-based curricula are overgeneralized and based on misconceptions. There is still much research going into observing the developmental stages, structure, and function of the human brain. Let's take a closer look. The cerebral cortex is the largest portion of your brain, and it is made up of four different lobes, each with their own important roles to play. The parietal lobe is located here. It's responsible for spatial processing and sensory functioning. The temporal lobe, here, is where memory forms. It is also where we process sound and language. The occipital lobe is vital for visual perceptions. And finally, the frontal lobe, located right at the front. This is where reasoning happens. It is also where you develop and refine your motor skills and expressive language. The prefrontal cortex is where the executive functioning happens. This is the reflective part of your brain, allowing you to solve problems, organize, self-monitor, and prioritize. Remember how your in-laws were coming for dinner this weekend and you had to take the kids to soccer before picking up the dry cleaning? Yeah, your prefrontal cortex has got that covered. Another important part of your brain that we can't forget is the amygdala. It's located just beneath the cerebrum on both sides of the thalamus. Not only does it play a role in higher order mental functioning key for learning, but it also kicks into gear our fight or flight instinct. The amygdala has full control over our emotions. Let it get overstimulated and we're in for a wild ride of fear, anxiety, embarrassment, boredom, frustration, or all of the above. If the amygdala enters this hypermetabolic state, information can't be fully processed and no learning can occur. So what can we do to keep our amygdalas in check? The best thing we can do as educators for our students is to establish daily routines, making surprises less frequent. Keep an open dialogue. Ensure that participation is valued over perfection. This will reduce the anxiety with a learner's brain, allowing them to absorb more of what they are learning. Construct achievable challenges together. Acknowledge learning barriers and create a plan to get around or move past them. But learning in its entirety is a bit more complicated than that still. Neuroscientists have uncovered the brain is always growing and changing. Although physical development of the brain halts around age 14, the synaptic connections of neurons allow for flexible growth and repair as people age, well into their senior years. This is known as plasticity. The neurons also have what we call dendrites, which grow with the neurons and allow for reorganizing of the connections within the brain, called pruning. Essentially, pruning is the restructuring of neural pathways that play a part in the use it or lose it phenomenon. This makes the brain's functioning efficient. For education, the best way to put pruning and plasticity to good use is to stimulate multiple areas of the brain while learning is occurring. This way, dendrites will form across multiple pathways, strengthening the connections between them. Therefore, in a classroom that is brain aware, an educator may want to consider the following to support strong brain development and efficient learning. Create a learning environment that immerses students in a learning experience. Reduce fear and stress by setting goals and keeping open communication, while maintaining a highly challenging environment to support the amygdala's functioning. Include opportunities for group work to develop social skills and cooperation. Provide active and passive places to learn, as well as giving students personal space for them to build organizational skills. 
give students time to be reflective and creative. And be flexible. Not everyone's brain is wired the same, but it is up to you to help them build those connections so each student's learning can be just as meaningful.